Sorry, folks. So what do I want to talk about today? Um, ergonomics, how's that for you? Should be interesting. I just spent the weekend revising my whole studio setup. I had everything on the floor for about a month and a half. A whole month and a half. But that's not my normal thing. What I normally do is I have all my gear up here or down there. And typically, what I'm doing is driving all the rig from down here with the Helix Floor, and that's driving the portable rig, which is that there. So, go with this. I'm doing this because one, I can look down and drive all this stuff without actually touching it. I can also have that off in another room, or I can go downstairs. And the big key to doing that is twofold. One is wireless, the old uh, CME witty thingies. I'll try and show you that. Do, 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 do. You'll see a blue blinking light there somewhere. There it is. Very hard to hold with this camera. And what happens is the very iPad, which I'm on right now, talks to that wirelessly. So right now it's on a music stand and I'm playing the guitar and going. And what I'm normally looking at on screen is on song. Why? I'm doing this for my boy Clark Burdett because for me, the ergonomics of it are, I find it a lot easier when sitting here at my desk in this position right here to have touchable right here on screen. There you can see, fingers. All the stuff. I tend to have sheets of different guitars that I'm doing or snaking paths of presets I'm going through and I do sort of a big noodle fest so let me dive in dive in and you can see it alrighty then here we have on song this is a um, Clapton signed being aged of this model in my sim one which is a profiler for guitars you can actually steal a guitars sound, stick it in this pedal, and then replay it with another one. Pretty cool thing. So what I end up doing is I lay out these screens just by going out on the net, finding a picture of a guitar, whitening it out, making it all look nice, lay it on screen, and give it the space. So here we're gonna flick to another favorite of mine, this PRS Hollow Buddy. Think of this as the ultimate little gas catalog. As you're going through and researching guitars, you can do this and the Rev Star. Gotta love a Rev Star. All of these things you can flick through. You can tap directly here on the pickups. And this is using sticky notes. You'll notice the tiny little trash can and the pencil appearing as I'm tapping on these. And these program 18 channel ones going out are displaced things for driving the old sim one here are the acoustics and as you only have one pickup per acoustic you can fit four on a page and the other ones you're going through what three or five different pickups so here are these sticky notes what I do with this is go down, make a tiny little mark, like a, a point or an exclamation point or something. Change the color of it so that the note is transparent and the text is blue, something bright. Then go to the left side and start putting in the MIDI. Right? You can scroll down, find it, or you can click that little hamburger button there in the actions and it will take you straight to MIDI. You can also navigate from page to page to page to page. So sometimes I have this jumping from one song you know, in, in notes to another. Any entrance that you have in this database is for a song. 
per se. But in this case, I'm putting in pictures instead of lyrics and sticking sticky notes all over the place so that you can drive these things. And that, for me, just seems to make the most sense. I can get through driving four pedals on one graphical image. And that really works. So here I am setting up a link from one song to the next song. After I've selected the guitar, I can hit somewhere else in the guitar and it will bounce off to a preset. This is what we were talking about the other day. The way the MIDI in this thing works is incredible. It, it organizes all of your channels, kind of like the MC6, you can put names in. All of your control messages, you can actually type in what it does. So you're not worried about CC69 to do this or CC71 to do that or CC54 to hit a button. You can put that in, but you can also put an explanation for what it's doing. These are all my presets. Imagine this, you can go through the pain of putting all that stuff in there if you're pretty sure that's what you're going to do. We're going to choose 46, which is the Plethora Madness one. It's a preset on the stump, which runs through the loop and gives me access to the Plethora. So there's the note done. Hard to see is that tiny little blue thing. If you tap on that with two while you're building these things, you'll notice the trash can, the pencil, there's the edge, edges of it. So I usually position these in place and then turn them transparent when they're ready. So here we've gone to the organ grinder and that's worked. Under every one of those little buttons there on the plethora, I've stuck in a sticky note and put MIDI in. So it toggles through. Zip back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So that's typically what I'm doing is layering a variax, which is driving the Sim 1. And I will go and stick a looper block in the big helix floor, record a track that I'm doing, and then pass that through the Sim 1. So you can audition a track by having both the variax and the same one working together, I can change tuning on the fly. Leave the same one going, or you could do even more, you know, different routing setups and actually have two or three or four different guitars and record them all. And you can stagger looping blocks throughout the, the pedal chain and do really cool things. For example, this. Not pardon my terrible playing, but you can search for stuff. You can put meta tags in. You can go through and find all of your jazz things. It'll bring up all the songs with jazz. And this is a one-off personalized guitar that this guy here in Italy had. And he profiled it with a Sim 1 and sent it to me. So that's a one-off guitar that you will never find anywhere. And I've got that sitting here in this box and can play it. I find this really good. And you see on screen, I've taken a Morningstar, copied it, and put sticky notes all over it. And each one of those sticky notes is remotely driving the actual MC6, which is on the floor. I can tap it with my foot or I can tap it here on screen. You can't do all of the actions that you'd normally do. You've got a tap and a double tap and that's it. But just those two for every preset, you can get a fairly convincing means of, of driving it. And if you change the morning star, no big deal. All this thing is doing is mapping those switches. So you hit that switch, whatever's in there in the morning star is gonna do what you want, which I think is pretty amazing. So I really hope you find this good, useful, interesting. Check this Benedetto, I love this thing. More gas. But yeah, you can nip around, do all sorts of crazy stuff. I'm still working on finishing these. 
got notes to stick in, but it gives you a lot of ideas whilst you're playing as to what's coming next, what's there. You can sling back and forth without actually activating anything. Choose and navigate on the fly. So for composition, this is ideal. For live, still got to work on it. But I think this is the way. And I really hope you enjoy messing with Ensong and come up with something really cool and creative and show us all. Are you ready, dude? So that's it for me. I'm out.